Hey guys, welcome to another session of Epic 7. This is my initial thoughts video for I, Giselle. I've been out of the game for a while, I got COVID and then life also caught up. So I missed the uh, initial thoughts for Winter and also Ningning. Ning. But uh, as I'm making this recording, I'm also at the same time rendering out my Ningning Ning showcase video. So uh, hopefully if you're watching this, maybe you want to check that out, uh, you can check that out. I, I like Ningning, Ning, um, but you will find out why. Uh, either way, this is talking about uh, Giselle and uh, let's go to her stat line right now. She's an Earth Elemental Mage and she's a Scorpio. And then I was looking at the journal and seeing that if there's any 5 star Scorpio, not to my recollection. And then I saw, I was like, ah, okay, I see. Uh, Fire Mercedes or Muru has the same star sign, but she is a 4 star base, so she is the first... 5 star uh, element, uh, five star Scorpio mage that we have so we now have a really good understanding of this stat line for any of the characters that you know will come out as a mage and a Scorpio uh, the attack being at uh, 1286 health 4733 it's low but I think it's still higher than someone like uh, Vivian who's a Sagittarius mage uh, the speed at 103 is eh, relatively slow in this meta, but it's it's usable because she's a very high damage dealer. So looking kind of like Stray's stats, actually, um, except without the bulk. The defense, of course, with the uh, 652, uh, 650 is like ge generally like the average mage defense, so it's kind of uh, expected. The crit rate at 27, which is in incredible, and then uh, an additional 10% more crit damage outside of your regular day-to-day -day DPS, so 200, uh, 160 crit damage. The imprint release and imprint concentration being at 12.9% uh, uh, attack for the uh, double slot in the back and the bottom. And the imprint concentration itself attack of 18%, both are actually really really good. Since I Giselle kind of serves as like a, I would say main DPS, but then she can still support another DPS. So she has a lot of like, I think heroes currently available right now that you might find familiarity to. So one being like, like Luna, um, S3 being high nuke damage into possible next turn, uh, with the EE supporting Luna, of course. Uh, and then, uh, and then, uh, doing high damage on the S1. She can do pretty much the same thing, similar rotation, uh, and uh, and then people compared to like Zahak as well, because uh, high damage modifiers, and then as well the kind of supporter element that the buffed Zahak got, and especially with the support of the EE as well. Um, without going into that, like, you know, the details of why, um, I think everybody's kind of on the same page in terms of like those kind of comparisons. But when you're talking about a double killing nuker, that's always really good. And that's why Ervalin had his sort of play for a while. Uh, and, and then of course Green Sid still very dominant with the uh, potential two turn kill. Uh, with like uh, insane damage mods with Soulburn and stuff. So uh, I Giselle is like close to Sid damage in terms of the S3. Uh, which we'll talk about here of course. But uh, she does need an attack buff. So... Frame of Light being the S3, and also just a side note, in case I forget to talk about it later, the artifact that she comes with is also called Frame of Light. I think this is the first time I've ever seen a, a skill name and artifact name be the same. So, maybe they just really want to emphasize this Frame of Light thing, and her S3 animation literally is this, like, this is a Frame of Light. Um, so I'm not quite sure, but uh, there could, it could be lore thing that I don't know about. But either way, uh, it reads uh, attacks the enemy with a light uh, before increasing the attacker, uh, the attack of the caster and the ally with the highest attack except for the caster for two turns. So, self attack buffer, uh, and it will buff automatically uh, as you're doing the single target attack. Uh, someone else accepts her. So even if she has the highest attack on the team, she will buff the second highest attack. Um, so this means that if she wants to ensure a kill, uh, either your opponent has to have a defense break or she has to have an attack buff. So I think that uh, uh, it would be an interesting rotation uh, that uh, you can somehow put Ning Ning to support her. But the issue with Ning Ning is that she also buffs the highest attack. So in the sense that if if uh, if I Giselle is meaning to support this attack buff onto another attacker, then that attacker will definitely have to be lower attack if you pair it with I Ning Ning as well. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, it could get very complicated, especially if you're not 
familiar with like let's say for example in like world arena you're not familiar with like who has the highest attack or whatever um i know i ran into that issue before where my a robbie had lower attack than my solitaria and uh a ross like dual attack pulled solitaria instead of a robbie to get a finishing blow but i didn't get it because i pulled solitaria uh so this could get a bit complicated but i think again um if you're using i nini uh, sorry i giselle rather in uh controllable fights so like guild war offense or arena offense or something like that which i potentially think think that you could use her there because realistically in those game modes all you need is high damage in rta of course it always becomes the draft issue so uh that's a totally different thing but of course this skill is very strong it is at a two times mod by the way so two times mod is in incredibly strong i think that sid soulburn is like 2.2 times mod or something but two times the mod is like for an S3 is insane because she can most likely well mo will most likely be on pen set as one of her best in slots. Um most likely have an attack buff supporter, and then we have damage sharing is ignored if it's for PvP. So without a lead or boss monster, uh when an enemy is defeated, grant an extra turn to the caster. So the simplicity of her kit, I think, you know, doesn't need I don't need to explain too long. It's just very, very powerful. High damage mods, supportive element with the attack buff for herself later, but ideally she gets attack buff before she attacks here. Um, but she also can attack buff uh, another ally, which is very, very nice. And then damage here, ignore, and she'll most likely be on penetration instead. So I, I put this damage in specifically into like a damage calculator, and I put the settings at 4k attack. 300 crit damage which like i said with the crit rate that she has and the 160 crit damage to boot she's already at a very high advantage with really high base attack so getting these stat lines are not like insanely hard um and it could be way higher if you're if you have like a specifically tuned team to run her on like slower speed right um with an attack buff uh against the 1500 defense opponent uh, the S3 will do 19,347 damage, and but that was with uh, also her frame of light artifact, which I'll talk about. It's it would be uh, realistically max limit broken, so the full 16% damage would go through. And this is also on pen set, so uh, 19,000 damage. I mean, it's not nothing for sure, um, and also it ignores Aureus, ignores uh, ROL's escort, or ignores those damage sharing effects, so very very power powerful tool, especially when she has a kit that still also supports someone else. Alright, so this is uh, one of the frames of the S3, this is the most clear frame that I could screenshot from the YouTube video, uh, and this also has the pucker lips. Um, now I will say this, that I think her S3 animation is very nice, it has that kind of like, like Epic 7 really nailed it. Like in terms of all of the S3 animations up to this point, we have yet to see Karina, uh, have been like, I, I would say pretty spot on. Like Ning Ning is like cutesy in a way, but it's still spot on. It's like kind of, kind of enjoyable to watch and uh, this one as well. The, the one thing I didn't like about this was that the, the, the lip puckering was very, very noticeable. Um, they held on these frames, so there's several frames of her pucking her lips for quite a while, and to some it might be like, oh, it's, it's kind of sexy or whatever. Um, I found it, it kind of awkward, personally, personally. I think it's just because, like, to me, the nose proportion to the lips, to the chin, like, it looks kind of odd, plus her eyes in this screenshot, like, are, like, insanely big. Now, I'm not complaining about big-eyed girls, alright? I personally like big eyed girls, but if you look at the proportions here, like even though you can't really see the nose visually, you can kind of see where it's supposed to be, right? Or maybe should we look at this? Yeah, this one, like there's like a little little dark dot there that dots the nose, right? But when you look at the S3 animation, you see the proportions are kind of off, where that's clearly, like that's, I don't know, it's kind of weird, right? So, so the two lines on top of the lips there, that's not her nostrils. That's like the top of her lips, but it's just kind of, it kind of makes you think it's the nostril too. So it's kind of, it's kind of just, it just feels kind of weird. Um, that's just me personally, but overall, like, I, again, like I said, like the art is great. Uh, the line work, the color work, uh, the animation itself is, is fantastic. Um, so, you know, you hear me like I'm complaining about girls that would 
want to kiss you? It's like, Dragon, you complain about a girl that want to kiss you? It's like, no, it's not that, man. It's just like too much lip gloss, okay? Okay, keep going. Skill 2, Linguistic Wisdom. So amplifies the effect of combat readiness and increases to the cast that it received by 50%. At the start of the turn, it has a 75- oh, sorry, 70% chance to dispel one debuff. If plus 5, it is 100%. I do like that aspect. Um, it's kind of like a built-in potion vial. That's the only thing I can connect to, because other heroes that have like kind of like a dispel mechanic like requires them to get hit. Um, so like the only thing that has like oh the dispel oh sorry the the debuff disappears on the turn is either like cow, like hand guy so cower ML cowerick's like passive kind of taking uh, reducing the debuff duration reducing the debuff duration sorry uh or or something like this you know so in in a way I would say this is unique but in terms of the mechanic and how it looks it would look just like a soul weaver with potion vol dispelling it on her turn but i do like this about her because this opens her up of course to like you know doing more damage or negative not getting provoked right so if you think about it like in uh let's say an fcc or a knight scenario like an a tywin or something like that where she's consistently can get provoked but she's also a lethal form of damage it's always really good that she can shake it off on any turn right any turn that she starts whereas like if you compare to someone like edward uh uh, F Maya, those type of characters, like, they can shake the debuff as you hit them, but, like, uh, I, to me, it, there's a difference of it, like, you know, dispelling at the start of the turn, too. I, I, I don't know why. I, in terms of Ed to her, mechanically, it looks about the same, but, um, I do like this aspect that, uh, on any debuff, at least that one debuff, uh, that could potentially, you know, uh, cripple her. For a turn, it, it doesn't it doesn't really work because she'll just dispel it. So I, I really like that aspect about this kit. Um, but of course, this is a passive, so it can be sealable by Archdemon Shadow, which means that she won't be able to dispel it. Okay, so um, so that there's that. The increase of the combat readiness received by 50%. <clears throat> that's kind of great too, right? Because so think about how like the the predominant CR boosters are right now. Um, let's say for DJB or even uh, I Ning Ning, for example, uh, would push her by 30%, right? So 50% of the 30% would be half of that, so 15, so 45% push. That's kind of good because, like, maybe, again, maybe you want her to be high nuke, so her speed might not be the fastest. But anyway, if you have a, either a team wide push or a single target push that doesn't usually push too significantly, um, having that extra boost, that 50% boost, um, on top of the combat readiness that's given to her is gonna is gonna be very beneficial because I feel like she is the high damage so she's kind of low speed but then she also wants to be kind of an opening damage dealer since she uh, does buff uh, 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 an ally and then the S1 attacks the enemy and increase combat readiness of the ally with the highest attack except the caster by up to 15% so if you plus for it but most likely you're going to increase you're gonna she's like a plus 15 hero basically um if you plan to use her she's a plus 15 hero for sure you can't be cheap on her uh damage dealt proportion to the target's current health ratio now i had to really understand that but luckily by the time i'm making this recording uh the damage mods are already out so we already know how this works so the s1 has a uh, innate damage mod of one uh soul burn increases the damage deal goes up to 1.7 but then has this additional damage dealing proportional to the target's current health ratio. Uh, it's uh, it's it's pretty good. <clears throat> it's a twenty percent uh, or zero point two percent target uh, current HP, which means if they're at one hundred percent HP, um, they would uh, she would do an additional twenty percent more, which makes this modifier up to not one point seven anymore for the soul burn. By the way. For the Soulburn, not 1.7 anymore, it would be at a 1.9. Which means that her S1 hits almost just as hard as her S3. But the S1, of course, does not skip damage sharing uh, mechanics. So, realistically, it will do lower damage no matter what. But it is 10%, only 10% lower if you Soulburn. But if you don't burn it, you have a uh, one times mod, like I said. But then with the, uh, if their health is at maxed, uh, the 20%, then you have a 1.2 times mod. 
which is as strong as a Milum S1 or Remuru S1. Um, I, th I believe they're 1.2? I remember their 1.2, it was either 1.1 or 1.2, but it's generally like their S1s are pretty high. Uh, so for the fact that her S3 can do so much damage, her base stats are really good for damage, her S1 technically is really high damage, I'm very surprised that they allow a soul burn for a 1.7. Um, so overall, I feel that she's very very solid, um, with the same stat lines in the damage calculator, 4k attack, 300 crit damage, pen set, attack buffed, um, and of course she will be attack buffed if she kills uh, on the S3 she grants another turn um, and she already self attack buffed so the S1 will no matter what have an attack buff assuming you go S3 first. Uh, comparing the S3 damage like I said into a 1500 defense hero uh, the S3 did 19,347 the S1 on the soul burn would do 19,280 so relatively about what is that my math is bad 160 damage more oh sorry 160 damage less than the s3 uh and then without the soul burn it would be at uh 11 11 um in my opinion after attack buff doing an s1 at 11,000 is not that bad right um, so again, that's that 1.2 times mod coming in. So if I lower the uh, uh, HP to 80%, that would look like a one times mod, I believe. Um, then the S1 will only hit for 11,000. Actually, it's not that much difference. It's still really good. It's still really good. Uh, so like basically, as their HP is lower, you do less damage, but you still still do a lot of damage anyway, and only by a 0.2 times mod, right? So realistically, it's like it's not gonna really change too much. She actually actually has just pretty insane damage mods now i think in terms of like if you're gonna rate a hero um and you're gonna talk about you know how how viable they are like someone like roy you know at the beginning of his release i think that there was only like one or two people and one being like elf mage who's who's more popular and w more well known uh was using roy at the beginning um and now roy's like a huge threat right because He's a he could be a pure damage dealer, but yet decently hard to kill. Now the issue with uh, I Giselle is that she doesn't have those kind of mechanics. Like yes, she has a cleanse, which is kind of good for a damage dealer, um, especially it's automatic. Um, but the issue is like she doesn't have those type of mechanics in terms of survival, right? Um, so even if you take a look at her base stats before we get to the artifact, the base stats, the defense of course is very solid, but you like, could you build her as a bruiser or do you want to build her as a bruiser? I would have my doubts on that. I would say that like she would be, if I were to use her, I would pick her in the long, the lines of kind of like a strays. So you're going to be playing very aggressive. You're going to be playing with kind of like a no comeback uh, potential, but I feel like that's the case with like I Ning Ning as well. As a Soul Weaver, she doesn't heal, she doesn't do all those kind of things, but then she's very aggressive, she does despell, she stuns, she pushes back, she does attack buff, and CR push, and berry inversion. So uh, I feel like I Giselle and I Ning Ning have decent synergy, if I can say it. Uh, feels like they have decent synergy. And uh, I'll, I'll probably I'll probably play around because I, I am like I said I already did a I Ning Ning showcase video um, in in regular arena uh, so I just I, I feel like I could use Giselle like right away uh, into my Ning Ning comp um, but again like I said like in some place like World Arena then she would be kind of like Irvalin she would be like uh, like a Green Sid Green Sid has an advantage of just being faster and he's a speed imprint so. You would have to think about like she's not a she's not gonna be like a in a two turn draft. Um, she'll definitely like have to be in a, an aggressive fight. But the thing is like her kit is very very solid. I think a lot of people are gonna have a lot of fun with her because her her kit realistically is very simple. She's just a simple, you know, uh, bread and butter damage dealer. Um, so I really really like that about her. Anyways, let's talk about the mage artifact, <laughs> Frame of Light again. So there's okay. So there's one thing about this, as you guys know, that as uh, I'm I'm not a DJ, I'm an artist. Um, I look at I look at the the waifus and and rate them, and and Giselle's definitely got that kind of like seductive vibe, okay. But also kind of like sporty and fun. She's like the girl that you would kind of want to date, you know. Um, but maybe not marry, okay. But uh, 
I'm only saying that because the the I think the artifact art is fantastic. I mean, it looks really cute. The pose she's doing is like it's not it doesn't feel super forced and awkward, kind of like a like a, an Epic Seven's history like Cirilla, like you know very very like awkward like you know you worry about her back pain issues. Um, but like this one's like kind of cute. It's kind of like loose. You can see the hand gestures are kind of like loose too. She's not even striking that pose in like a very like forceful manner um so it's just very very nice uh and then the artifact itself i would have to say like this banner if you're going to be like hamming on the giselle banner it's like i think it's like probably the best bang for buck so far out of the three heroes uh from the Espa collab this artifact i think will be her best in slot because realistically what this artifact is is basically it, it sets her to be more like luna so self-sufficient soul generating right so again if you're familiar with luna the s3 has defense pen it does good damage um you most likely run luna on a pen set if she does the s3 and she has the ee that grants her an extra turn then the she she gains 10 souls after doing the s3 uh she gets the extra turn built in her kit and then the souls are are put onto the artifact um back when i used to run like the cleave luna luna would be on a portrait or merciless glutton since like if i two turn kill i get like a cr boost for my rest of the teammates and she doesn't necessarily get that but she sort of does as well because if you do kill and the merciless glutton is also 16 percent increased damage this also is um and so you can really see the similarity in, in terms of like luna with merciless glutton on pen set killing gain 10 souls soul burn s1 kill again you get a cr boost in her case uh sorry team cr boost on two of luna's hits in her case, it would be S3. Ideally, she gets an attack buff as well, just like Luna. Attack buff on the S3 first, attacks with the S3, kills the target, 16% damage, gains 10 souls. She gets an extra turn because of her kit. S1, soul burn to get that 1.9, assuming that their health is at max. 1.9 damage mod, kill, but the S1 pushes, and she already attack buffed someone else, right? Uh, pushes uh, another ally. Uh, or either the first highest attack or the second highest attack, it doesn't matter because it won't be herself, pushes them up to 15%. So you can really see the similarity. She's the mage version of Luna without Luna's kind of innate survival things where like she has a kind of like a 50% anti crit or whatever. I think it's 50 or is it 30? Maybe 30% on Luna. So yeah, so similarities are definitely there. But why I went through all that. Uh, to get to the point of saying that if you're going to pull for Giselle, realistically, you should be pulling for the artifact as well as Giselle. The best case scenario is that you luck out uh, with the same amount of copies of the artifact as you do Giselle for imprints. Because again, the imprint release could be good if you need to tune certain things. Like let's say for example, you have her at like 4k attack, but your strays is also 4k attack or maybe sub 4k like 3.9. And you needed a specific tuning where you needed Shreza's attack to be higher than Giselle or something like that. Then she can, you know, change the imprints to release the imprint concentration um, and uh, give it to release. So you give Shreza the highest, highest attack. When she needs to be the highest attack, and let's say they're both sitting at 4k, then you give her the self imprint concentration. So the flexibility on her, I feel like overall, her as a hero with the artifact coupling is one of the like the neatest uh pairings that epic 7 has released in a very 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 long time generally it would be like oh an imprint release is kind of awkward but the imprint concentration is good or the imprint concentration is good imprint release is awkward or the kit is really bad the artifact is good or vice versa so i feel like i Giselle is a very satisfying character to kind of review my initial thoughts on because it's just very very pleasing all right so that's pretty much it and we already have a lobby full of three girls and the Espa collaboration i think is one of their best ones i'm not a k-pop fan for those who know me i didn't know what Espa was or who Espa was no offense to people who like Espa. apologies um, but I think that Epic 7 did a really, really good job up to this point. I hope Karina doesn't let us down. 
um, up to this point that every single hero um, I, I like, uh, either the kit or even just the visuals. Uh, the artifacts have all been all interesting, you know, like, like I, I think Winter's artifact is the only one I have a hesitation on. Ning Ning's artifact, potentially really good in the future as well, um, or even currently. But uh, Giselle right now, I feel like is the, the banner at the mo- like right now. Uh, that has the most incentive for you to uh, spam past just like one copy of each. That's just my opinion. All right, so we still have Karina left, which hopefully I'll have the time to make that video as well. But for this one, I'm going to end this here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about I, Giselle? Or even in the, uh, uh, since I missed the last two initial thoughts, uh, what do you guys think about Ning Ning and Winter as well? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. It would be good to, to read them again. I'm going to end this here. If you guys have Discord, check out the Discord server. Subscribe to YouTube if you haven't. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time.